before we even begin Hollywood, listen to me. Listen to me. Can we stop? Please. I don't know what it is. It, it feels as though everyone who wasn't black went to go see Black Panther and they saw this fucking haircut. And everyone turned around and was like, you know what? I think every single influential black man from this point in time should have this hair. No! The black community, we are tired of this hair. We tired of this hairstyle. White people, you remember when the, the, the Bieber was the haircut and everybody was getting the Bieber, but you as a white person was like, there is not a day in my fucking life that you will ever catch me rocking this stupid ass fucking hairstyle. That is what this hairstyle is. So I don't know, talk talk to someone. If you're somebody in media and you're thinking about creating a black character, just know this hairstyle is most certainly not it. Well, Star Wars The Acolyte is finally out, so let's talk about it. This, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this show is misfiring. And for a while, I couldn't understand what the misfire was, because the story itself is interesting. Because it's, it's more or less current at the beginning of Murder Mystery where we see the Jedi as these detectives that go out and investigate a situation and collect clues and speak to witnesses in order to form some type of idea as to who the person is that has essentially perpetrated this crime. And we've never really seen the Jedi as an investigative slash police force before, because for the most part, when we talk about the pre-Empire Jedi, the pre-Empire Jedi are very, or should I say just the general Galactic Republic Jedi, they were very much an arm of the Senate, where if a situation occurs, the Senate dispatches the Jedi to handle that situation. Whereas here in the High Republic, there's a level of freedom that almost breathes a breath of fresh air into the Order, where it kind of feels like uh, Star Wars The Old Republic's video game where your Jedi will take on tasks and basically head out as a galactic peacekeeper in order to handle that task and then report their findings and their situation back to the the Senate, well, the Jedi Council proper. That feels really, really good. What doesn't really feel good for me is everything else. Uh, the tone of this is really weird because I feel as though the promotional materials, and I'm going to talk about one poster in particular. There is one particular promotional poster, which is a lightsaber that instead of the light shaft coming out of the saber, it's a trail of blood. And I thought that was dope as shit when I originally saw it because I thought that walking into the Acolyte, this series was going to be a whole lot darker than anything we had received inside of Star Wars forever. Of course, there have been dark situations that occurred in the books. There have also been, um, I don't even know what word to use to describe it, but the movies have basically dabbled with darker themes and darker tones in regards to the character arc of certain characters or certain situations such as the clone army being nothing more than soldiers that are essentially slaves, uh, uh, which is a dark reflection of the Jedi who go out and kidnap children or take children forcibly from their families to turn them essentially into brainwashed child soldiers. There have always been dark themes, but the dark themes have never really been fully explored. And I really thought that the Acolyte was going to show us a, a side of the dark side that we had never seen before. Somebody who was brought into the Sith that is essentially being trained, that if you're somebody who's read the comics, feels a lot like the Maul comics, explaining how he was basically kidnapped from his mother by Sidious, and how Sidious basically threw him onto a planet in the wilds, in the middle of nowhere, in the water, where he's cold and shivering as a child, and he has to learn how to, how to survive. 
and how Sidious basically implements a level of care, but then also a level of torture, both physical and psychological, to break Maul and forge him into like this jagged weapon that he can turn and point towards the Jedi. And I thought that's what we were going to get in this. But instead, it just kind of feels as though the tone is kind of meandering, where it's basically the Jedi, just a, a, a dash of paprika on the top, uh, you know, adding a little bit of seasoning, switching it up a little bit. And the more interesting character in the form of May, who's essentially running around as the acolyte of this unknown Sith Lord, we're not really exploring her her past. Now, there's always a chance that as time progresses and as we get more and more episodes, they'll start delving into that. But there really needs to be a more darker and more serious tone. And that basically segues into the second thing that I don't like. I don't like the choreography in this show. Uh, I think that everything is basically over-choreographed. It leans more towards Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, where I feel as though it should be leaning more towards John Wick, where you have this person that the Sith is basically teaching them all of this rage and all of this hatred that they're enacting on these Jedi that she felt as though have wronged her. And it really feels as though that there needs to be more passion and more anger in regards to the fight scenes, where she should be fighting with a lot more hatred and a lot more anger. She should be fighting while endangering civilians to basically cause the Jedi to turn and try and save them, allowing them, allowing her the chance to basically brutally kill these individuals. Like, she stabs Carrie Ann Moss's Indara one time. It, it, to be honest, when she got stabbed, I laughed. I laughed for a solid maybe 30 seconds because it kind of feels as though every single individual we've ever encountered in Star Wars has survived giant gaping lightsaber wounds. And this one itty bitty little dagger was able to take out an entire Jedi Master. It was the funniest thing on the face of the planet. I really feel as though in that situation, when she finds someone that she feels as though had uprooted and destroyed her life, she should have went ham with that dagger, I'm talking full on, on her, just 300 stabs all over the body in, in a, a show of just hatred and rage to get a, to get the point across that this person is basically being fueled by all of her darkest emotions. And we didn't exactly get that. Now, like I said, we, we have, for the most part, in uh, these first two episodes, uh, probably the introduction of one of my favorite, uh, <laughs> one of my new favorite Jedi Masters ever in the form of Jedi Master Soul. That man is cut from the same cloth as Qui-Gon Jinn, and you can never get me to hate characters that are in that, in that box, that fit that box perfectly of Jedi who basically look around and go, damn, this order is raggedy as fuck. But yeah, uh, so far, first two episodes, they were okay. Um, definitely a whole lot of room for improvement. I kind of find myself landing in the middle of the people who really like it and the people who really don't, where there are certain things in this that I can sit back and, to be quite honest, I can completely enjoy. I enjoy seeing the Jedi at the height of their power. Uh, the flex of when the Jedi walked onto the, the, the ship and the captain tried to pretend that the person they were looking for wasn't there and he raised his hand almost to, you know, do a Jedi mind trick or compel the captain to speak the truth. And it scared the shit out of everybody because people are aware of what the Jedi can do in this time because they're not like this super secretive order. That felt really, really good. But it's just the tone of the dark side characters along with the tone of the murder mystery and the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon fight scenes that kind of pull me out of the story that they're trying to tell. But let me know what you guys think about Star Wars The Acolyte. Comment down below, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.